Last week, the focus was on marriage and divorce. We pointed out the marriage and the vows of the children of Israel, which we really covered in the book of Exodus. We have to remember, we are entering into a marriage with the bridegroom, Yeshua, the Messiah. Many people don't know, at least I can say I did not know. And I wasn't taught in my Christian faith as I was walking that journey, that Jehovah actually gave Israel a certificate of divorce. Which in turn, now that I understand that, it helps me understand the renewed covenant with his son, Yeshua. Welcome to Reconcile the Kingdom where working towards becoming a harmony of the whole word of truth. My name is Patrice Robinson and I appreciate you coming here on today. We're going to go through the significant events of Deuteronomy chapters 25 through 27. Chapter 25. When two people are in court and one is guilty, he is to get 40 slashes and not more because that would bring disgrace on him which you should remind you of Yeshua. Do not muzzle an ox. Now that should bring you to 2 Corinthians, I think it's chapter nine, when Paul talks about giving to the teachers. A brother dies and leaves no children. His brother should marry his brother's wife and have the first child on behalf of the brother. Now there's a way out of this if the brother does not want to marry his brother's wife, which we see played out in the book of Ruth. The Bible speaks against women grabbing the genitals as a way of defending her husband from another man. Jehovah's against dishonest people who use unjust weights, now, I want you guys to remember this. Now, the Amalekites is not to be forgotten and should be wiped out because how they went to war with Israel. Now, this should bring you to Saul, 1 Samuel, and the book of Esther, chapter 26. The first 11 verses in chapter 26 is discussing the first fruit offerings. And then we also have the third year tithes that goes to the Levites, that go to the orphans, which is the fatherless, the stranger, and a widow. Moses reminded them to keep the commandments, the statutes, and the ordinance. And the nations, the children of Israel was um, identified and he will put his people above all other nations. That's all the joint in into the nation of children of Israel. Chapter 27. Again, Moses reminds the people to keep the commandments and gave them specific instructions that when you cross the Jordan River and get to the stones on Mount Ebal, build altars. Mind you, not to be, just build any, any kind of altar, but this altar has to be uncut stones and then you offer your offerings on that uncut stones. When you would write the instructions on the stones. Now, you actually see this chapter, chapter 27, played out in the book of Joshua. Now there's more, there's some more, there's more for the instructions. When you get there and do all of this, you would divide the tribes in two different groups. You have a group of six. At Mount Gerizim, you will have Simeon, Levi, Judah, Issachar, Joseph, and Benjamin. And they will be pronouncing the blessings. Then at Mount Ebal, you have six different tribes, the other, other six. That means you have Reuben, Gad, Asher, Zibelin, Dan, and Natali. And they will be pronouncing the curses. Chapter 27 is the list of curses that will come upon for disobedience. The focus today, the curse of the law. I know after reading Deuteronomy 27 verse 26, you read this curses anyone who does not fulfill the words of the law by doing them and all the people should say amen now this should bring you to paul's letter and to the galatians for this we will get that the law is the curse for those who doesn't obey but does the bible actually teaches this does the bible actually say this are we reading the scriptures correctly now let's look at paul just for an example 
He followed the feast. He paid vows. He kept the Sabbath on the Saturday, which is the seventh day. Is he walking in the way of the instruction? The law tells you to look for the prophet that is coming. The law still tells us about the son that is coming. Is this a curse? Instead of me trying to prove that the law isn't a curse, because you first need to understand the difference between the works of the law, which is the practice of Judaism, and then the book of the law, which is Torah. This, Paul talks about several different laws in his writing, and what confuses people is they don't know which law he is referring to. What I'm going to do, I'm going to tell you just briefly on what the Torah is. Remember Yeshua, Jesus, which is known by more, you know, amongst the Christians and other people. He is the word. So people are calling him a curse. John 10, 9 and 10 says, I am the door. If anyone enters through me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal, kill and destroy it. And I came so that you will have life and have it abundantly. That's Yeshua, who is the word. He is the Torah. He is the Tanakh. They speak of him. Romans 7 and 12. So then the law is holy and the commandment is holy and righteousness and good. James 1 and 25. But one who has looked intently at the perfect law, the law of freedom, and has continued in it, not having become a forgetful hearer, but an active door, this person will be blessed in what he does. Psalms 119. So I will keep you law continually forever and ever, and I will walk at liberty, for I seek your precepts. Now these are just small, a few examples. So if the Bible teaches you that the Torah, the instruction, the law is light, it's a lamp, it's light, it's truth, it's righteousness, it's perfect, it's a teacher, and much, much more. And once you see the whole word, then how do you reconcile that the Torah is a curse? Especially since Yeshua is the word something to think about. I hope that this was cause you to pray, research, and study so you can see the whole word of truth that is one plan. Join me on Saturday, as you know, that we continue our journey is what did Yeshua teach as we continue to follow the footsteps of the master teacher, our Messiah. Then I will see you next Tuesday at 7 o'clock p.m. for Torah Chat Points as we go through chapters 28 through 30 of the book of Deuteronomy. As always, man does not live by bread alone, but every word that proceeds out of the mouth of Jehovah. Have a blessed rest of the week and thank you for joining me on today.